Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to uneducated guests. Hi. My name is Matt Baer. I am a physics and mathematics teacher here at Easton High School, and I'm also the advisor for Talbot Players, the improvisational comedy group here at Easton High. Uh, we are a brand new improv comedy group. Uh, we specialize in short form improvisational comedy. What you're going to see tonight, we have four lovely talented student performers tonight. You'll all get to meet them in just a bit. Everything you're going to see these folks do is made up completely off the top of their heads. They'll be given a prompt, they'll be given a character and a situation, and they have to run with it. They have no idea what they're about to do. They have no idea who they're going to be. They have no idea what they're going to have to go through. In order to prove that, some of the suggestions are going to have to come from you. So I'm going to need you to put your thinking caps on now and start getting creative. So, in order to do that, you've heard enough about me, let's meet the players, shall we? First and foremost, we have our good friend, a freshman by the name of Jonas Anders. Right behind him, our lovely senior, Mr. Amai Janels. The lovely Emily Whitman. <laughs> and you all know Mr. Matthew Keeler. Okay. In a moment, you'll get to see these folks perform everything that they have worked so hard to create over the last couple of months, and we hope that you will thoroughly enjoy it. In order to make sure that it is completely wonderful and that everything is as fantastic as it could possibly be, I'm going to ask just a couple things. First of all, within the next 20 seconds, here's what I'm going to need from everybody. If you have a cell phone, a beeper, a pager, a smoke signal, a flare gun, some way to communicate with the outside world, I ask that you please silence it now. It is distracting not only to the performers, but also to you guys when somebody else's cell phone goes off, so please make sure those are silenced and those are not, not going to cause a distraction during the show. Um, along the line of distractions. If you wish to take photographs, take video, you are more than welcome to do so. Since everything is made up off the top of their head, none of it's copyrighted. It's impossible for us to do that. So, you are more than welcome to video record anything. You are more than welcome to photograph anything. The only thing we ask, please do not use a flash. The thing is, if there's a big bright flash that comes out of the audience, it makes it really hard for them to see. It's very blinding. And it can cause a brief distraction. It can throw off the timing, throw off the funny, and none of us want that to happen. Make sense? Awesome. In that case, on with the show, shall we? <laughs> what we're going to do, we're going to start off with a game that we call Dating Game. Basically what this is going to do, this is going to be for all four of our performers. What's going to happen? Come on, guys. What's going to happen? Don't forget your shares. To tell them everything. What's going to happen? We are going to have four folks here. Our good friend Jonah is going to be the contestant on a video show. What's going to happen is, Jonah is going to interview these three lovely bachelors. <laughs> He's going to ask them a series of questions, find out which one of them he would like to take out on a date. However, here's the thing. Each one of them has some strange odd quirk about them, some strange character flaw. And Jonah has no idea what any of these are going to be. What's going to happen? Excuse me. What's going to happen is he's going to go ahead and he's going to interview each one of these. Through the process of interviewing them, he's going to try and see if he can figure out what each of their character flaw is. And at the end of the whole thing, he's going to go ahead and he's going to see if he can guess. In order to make sure that he does not hear us assign those character flaws, what's going to happen is he is going to take some music. He is going to listen to extremely loud music while we figure out who these folks are going to be. We're waiting. <laughs> Can you hear me? Exactly. Okay. So, Maja, you are going to be an overly dramatic Shakespearean actor. <laughs> okay. For Emily, here's what I'm going to need. 
Do you need an idea for a superhero? Shout them out. What do you think? Ideas for a superhero? Ant-Man. Say again? Ant-Man. Are you Ant-Man? Come on. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Come on, keep them coming. Flash. 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 Are you Flash? Flash. 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 Come on, just shout them out. Okay. Hulk. Hulk. <laughs> I like the Hulk. Emily, you believe that you are actually auditioning for the role of the Hulk. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and, Matt, you are slowly being attacked by a swarm of bees. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, who are you? I'm someone thinking that they are auditioning for the part of the Hulk. Maja, who are you? I'm an over the magic person. <laughs> Play. Hello and welcome to another episode of Steal Your Heart Away. This episode features me and our three lovely contestants. Let's begin. Contestant number one, let's say that I want to prepare a dish that you did not at all enjoy. Let's say it was soup that was poorly cooked. How would you respond? To be or not, that is the question. No, my question was, <laughs> I prepare a dish that doesn't turn out right, how would you respond? I respond in love. That's so nice. <laughs> Contestant number two. Let's say that you were given a million dollars, but you were told that you had to spend it all on me. Okay? Um, wh what would you give me? Something that, if I were to break it, you probably wouldn't be that mad at me, because you don't want to make me angry. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly hope not. <laughs> Contestant number three. So, let's say that I've been having a terrible day. What would you do to comfort me? Well, if it were me, what the heck was that thing? <laughs> um, okay, um, I, I, I appear as a, like, my skin's like inflaming and, and redness. That's... And it's, it's really starting to bother me. Are you feeling this too? Um, why this affects the people? Um, um, please stop the jammy. This hurts really bad. Okay, um. <laughs> So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Contestant number one. Let's say that I wanted to go out to see a movie. Um, considering what's in theaters right now, what would you take me to see? Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> Contestant number two. Let's say that I were to do something that upset you. How would you respond? Ah! Considering this, <laughs> we'll have to move on to contestant number three. Contestant number three. <laughs> if I were ill, would you make me some assumingly not undercooked? Soup? If you were ill, do you not realize what's happening to me right now? Do you not hear that fussing? They're coming for me. They're coming for me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll take note of that. So, considering what you've all said, I'll have to go with contestant number one for my date. <laughs> Who are they? Okay, um, William Shakespeare, or something of the sort. Ah, eh, close enough, close enough. He's an overly dramatic Shakespearean actor. Okay, okay, um, okay. She, she was just upset. What? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, think about a character who just happens to be in green. Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> Grover? <laughs> you 
know that she's going to avenge you if you die, right? Uh, the Hulk. Yeah. The Hulk. <laughs> Alright, Matt, okay, I'm thinking, you know those trackers that they have in your arm in like the Hunger Games? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think he had one of those in, but it was also like lighting his skin on fire. <laughs> Think a little less technological. <laughs> he was literally on fire from this point in his skin. What would cause you to feel like you're on fire at one place in your skin and uh, buzzes around your head? Oh, pirates. <laughs> Close enough. He's attacked by a swarm of bees. Awesome. Fantastic. Awesome. All right. Cool. All right. We're going to move on to a game that we call Two Line Vocabulary. This game is going to be for Emily, Matt, and Jonah. All right, here's what's going to happen. These three are going to act out a scene for you. Now, here's the thing. Emily, she's allowed to say whatever she wants. However, Matt and Jonah, they are restricted to each having only two lines that they're allowed to deliver the entire time. They're going to say the same two things over and over and over again and they need to come up with some kind of a story that's going to go through this. What's going to happen is, Matt, your two lines are, what does that mean? <laughs> and this is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Jonah, yeah. you are only allowed to say, will there be explosions? <laughs> and you said it, not me. <laughs> Matt, what's your question? What does that mean? Jonah, what's your statement? Uh, that's, you said it, not me. You said it, not me. Okay, what I'm going to need from the audience, I'm going to need some kind of an event for which you would hire some help, some people to help you out. A wedding. Your wedding. Birthday party. Your birthday party. Decoration. Your Christmas. Prom. Prom. Class reunion. <laughs> I like class reunion. I like class reunion. Okay. <laughs> Emily, mm -hmm. you are the manager of a catering company, awesome. <laughs> and you are working with two brand new hires, Matt and Jonah, as you prepare the catering company to cater a class reunion. All right. Ready? <laughs> Play. All right, newbies, listen up. <laughs> we got to get those boxes down in the kitchen so our chefs can start heating up some stuff and actually make it into something edible. But will there be explosions? <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it means you grab the boxes, you move them into the kitchen. This is exciting! <laughs> no! And possibly on a molecular level, on an empty state. You said it, not me. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it means I said something. You, unless you want to get fired, you can stop that or our attitude right now. This is exciting! <laughs> no, no, I don't care. Get the job done. Or you're fired. All right, all right, all right. But will there be explosions? <laughs> Your man offered me one, two, no, unless you can see on a molecular level. What does that mean? It means something really, really tiny, and you can't see it normally. This is exciting. <laughs> no. You said it, not me. You guys are letting bugs in. Come on, you, you, get those boxes to the kitchen. What does that mean? Use your hands like this. <laughs> Pick up the box and you move it over. This is exciting. <laughs> then do it. What Just wondering, mean? will there be explosions? <laughs> this is exciting. <laughs> Both of you, stop. Now, stop it right where you are. Sit. Sit. What does that mean? Sit down. <laughs> She said it, not me. <laughs> like this. this is exciting! <laughs> now, because you two both have the mental capabilities of toddlers, <laughs> I'll, I'm going to explain as best as I can. Will there be explosions? <laughs> this <No>. is exciting! <laughs> Hush. What does that mean? <laughs> Keep your mouth shut. Don't make noise. And this no, is there won't be explosions. <laughs> <laughs> now. I'm going to explain this the simplest way I can, and the nicest, because if I don't, you guys are getting fired. What does that mean? 
It means you're out of a job, and I don't pay you. This is exciting. <laughs> Good to know. Now, you two both use your legs. After I tell you to stand, but not now, you walk over this way. What does that mean? One foot goes like this, and the next lifts up and goes like that. You said it, not me. This is exciting. Great. So you're walking over here. And you take your hands like this, and you go like that, and you put your hands around the little holders, and you lift up the boxes full of frozen chicken. Don't, I'm not going to tell you what it means. <laughs> Carefully, again, with your feet going in the repetitive pattern to walk. This is exciting! Good to know! Stop making noises with your mouth. No, don't show me explosions! <laughs> their salt. Here's how this game is going to work. This is for all four performers. What's going to happen is these performers are going to split into two teams. I'm going to need Emily and Amaya. I'm going to need you guys over there. I'm going to need Matt and Jonah. I'm going to need you guys over here. Here's what's going to happen. Emily and Amaya, they are going to start acting on a scene. Matt and Jonah are going to watch. These two are going to act out the scene. They're going to have exactly two minutes to act out the scene that they're about to do. I'll keep time over here. And I'll call time, I'll give them hints to tell them how much time they have left, and then I'll call time when they're done. When they are finished, Matt and Jonah, they are going to take the same exact scene. They're going to act it out a second time. However, this time, they're only going to have one minute. They're going to do the whole thing in one minute. Mm. Then, when they're done doing it in one minute, they're going to come back, they're going to do it in 30 seconds. Ooh. 15 seconds. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 10 seconds, <laughs> 5 seconds. <laughs> Make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. How long do you guys have? Two minutes. Two minutes. Amaja, Emily, you are two bank tellers at a bank at closing time when suddenly one of you realizes the drawer is missing $500. <laughs> Play. Oh, no. I need to go get my hair and do it next time. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, the 
bigger the hair, the closer the God. <laughs> 30 seconds. All I have to say is return the money before I call the manager. Well, honey, you might want to tell that manager, because, honey, I need to go get some hair did. <laughs> and be nice, don't come eat it. Money, <laughs> give it now. Give me the money. Okay. <laughs> 10 seconds. Come on, hurry it up! Time. Scene. <laughs> Matt, Jonah, how long do you have? <laughs> One, minute. One minute. Play. Oh, this is exhausting. I gotta get home to my kids. <laughs> do you know? Yeah, I do. Well, I don't have kids, but I'm gonna be getting my hair done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let me just check check the cash register. Um, it appears to be that we're missing five. Oh, I don't doubt that. <laughs> Five hundred dollars, that's quite a sum. Where is it? You probably took it. Are you calling me a criminal? Thirty seconds. Well, your hair certainly isn't as nice as mine. So. I didn't think you would be the criminal. Can you please fork over the money? Um, no. The, um, okay. First of all, you like to steal my hair gel because 15. your hair isn't nice. Second of all, I don't like to steal because I've got money. <laughs> so you probably stole the money. You should put it back before I call the manager. Five. I always knew that you were a criminal. It's because of my hair. Now fork over the money. Time. <laughs> you think that one was hard. How long do you guys have? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Play. I'm going to go get my hair did. I gotta get my kids before they freak. Yeah, girl. I think this hairstyle suits me very well. <laughs> We're missing $500. I think you stole it. <laughs> I think you stole it. You and Fifteen. fancy hair? It's because I'm black and I have fancy hair, huh? <laughs> yes, it is. Give me your money! No. <laughs> Here's 20. Uh, I'm out. Tell the manager I quit. Time. Oh. <laughs> Matt Jonah, how long do you have? Fifteen. Fifteen oh. seconds. Play. So oh. here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna get my hair done, and you're gonna stay here and count the money. Ten seconds. Okay. Uh, uh, it appears we're missing five hundred dollars. That's quite a sum. I can get one of my kids. Give me the money. I know you're gonna keep it. You're just jealous of my hair, aren't you? <laughs> Give me the money now. I gotta get home to my kids. Time. <laughs> How long do you have? Ten, Ten seconds. seconds. Ready? Play. Everybody here goes to my hair do because I think this hair starts to be very We're missing five hundred dollars. I think you me your so money. Give me your money now. Here's twenty. Time. <laughs> How long do you have? Five seconds. Five seconds. <laughs> Play. Listen. <laughs> Time. And you're going to go and steal five hundred dollars. That is not okay. Time. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. We're going to move on to a game that we like to call Press Conference. The way this game is going to work, I'm going to need all four performers. What's going to happen is, Emily is going to be some kind of celebrity. We'll figure out exactly who she is in just a bit. She's some kind of celebrity, and she has been caught in some kind of a scandal. And she is holding a press conference to talk to the press about this scandal and everything that's resulted. However, she does not know who she is or what she did. Our other three performers, Matt, Imaj, and Jonah, they are going to be reporters at this press conference. They know who she is and what she did. And they are going to, through a series of questions, give her hints when she's going to try to figure out who she is and what she did. Sound cool? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, here's what I'm going to need. Can you hear me? I hate the ponytail. What? <laughs> well, okay. What I'm going to need, I'm going to need some type of a food product, some kind of food. Cream corn or <laughs> cheese. 
I like easy cheeks. I like easy cheeks. Emily is Emily is the tooth fairy. And she has been caught paying for teeth with easy cheeks. Guys ready? Call sit stand Ben. Here's how it's going to work. This game is going to be for Emily, Imaja, and Jonah. This is a chair. I'm going to need one chair. Here's what's going to happen. These three are going to act out a scene. The scene that they act out, however, 
comes with one limiting requirement. One of them at all times must be sitting. One of them at all times must be standing. One of them at all times must be bent over. If one of them changes how they're positioned, somebody else has to change accordingly. So that we always have one person sitting, one person standing, one person bent over. The three of you are mechanics who are trying to repair a car. Ready? Alright, so here's what I'm saying. It probably <laughs> caught fire. Probably. Probably. Really now. Somebody could have gotten, you know, spray cheese in there, but <laughs> 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 either or. I mean, maybe the spray cheese caused the fire. Is that covered under their insurance? Can we charge more? Um, I have no idea. Um, okay, so it's dirty. It doesn't smell nice. And I'm currently underneath it. Anything else you need to know? Oh. Oh, get up. Out. I want to take a check. Come here, Joel. Just go around there and pull over. Yeah, I'm your boss. <laughs> Let's just say they didn't. Okay, so they didn't. That, go on and water the tally. Um, <laughs> huh. So how much do you think it's going to cost to replace the entire inside and underside of the car? Well, we could replace half of it, and then they could come back later and we could charge them more. <laughs> <laughs> that would totally work. Or it just be. Let's at least fix Popular game using a lot of improv circles. We're going to use something that we call weird newscasters. Here's how this game's going to work. This is going to work for all four of our performers. We're going to need two chairs up in the front. Imagine. Imagine is going to be the anchor for a news station. He is going to open up the newscast and he is going to brought, guide us through this newscast. However, a bunch of the other newscasters on the station have odd personality quirks that make casting the news a little bit more unusual than you would imagine. Imagine's gonna be our anchor. His co-anchor is going to be Miss Emily. But the thing about Miss Emily is, she has absolutely no control over the volume of her voice. <laughs> <laughs> over here on this side of the stage, we are going to have Jonah. Jonah is gonna take care of the sports. The problem with Jonah, however, while he is doing the sports, he is also a mad scientist. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the other side of the stage, we're going to have Matt, and Matt is going to be in charge of the weather. The thing about Matt, however, Matt finds out in the middle of his weather cast that he can actually control what the weather is going to be just by touching the weather map. 
<laughs> Ready? Play. Hello, and welcome to WBOC. <laughs> I'm your host, Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> we had a recent newscaster of the week tell us that um, there's a new sickness going around that's called the gobbles. <laughs> yes, the gobbles is going around. So if you catch the gobbles, don't mind. <laughs> I think we should go to sports. I'm Dr. Vaughn, scientist. <laughs> <clears throat> so, recently in sports, you'll notice that that guy kicked the ball, and it definitely went into the goal, and they most likely won the game. Oh, um, also, um, one guy kicked the ball foot football between the yellow post, and it got them like three or four points. <laughs> I, I'm a bit busy right now. Are you okay, Mr. Listen. What is that? If you want to make a new life form, you've got to have a couple of chemicals on your table. But you guys are asking me to talk about people kicking balls between pegs. <laughs> Safe to have that there? No. <laughs> to a local favorite of the crew. We're going to see a game that we call Location Career Death. You can tell it's their favorite. The way this game is going to work, I'm going to need all four performers for this one. What's going to happen is, we're going to start with Jonah. Jonah's going to be out here in the room. The rest of the three are going to go out the hall where they can't hear what we're saying, simply because I don't have three sets of headphones. <laughs> What's going to happen is, we are going to give Jonah a place where he lives, we're going to give him a life career choice, and we're going to give him a method of dying. <laughs> What's going to happen is, 
one of these three lovely actors is going to come in on stage. Jonah is going to have exactly one minute to communicate to that next actor where he lives, what he did for a living, and how he died. Here's the thing. He's going to have one minute to do it, and he cannot use any words. He can act out whatever he wants. He can make grunts, noises, anything like that, but he cannot say any words. Make sense? At the end of a minute, Jonah is going to die. The next actor is going to communicate it to the next actor so on. We're going to pass it on down the chain. At the very end, we're going to see how much this whole thing changes before the whole thing is said and done. Sound cool? All right, in that case, Jonah, front and center, everybody else, out the hall. Bye, everyone. Okay. Plug your ears. What we are going to need, I'm going to need a place for Jonah to live. Now, think of general types of places. Don't say acetate, say the beach. That type of thing. Think of types of places. Where does Jonah live? Just shout him out. Trailer Where park. Mountain. Trailer park. Your mountain, a trailer park. The desert. The woods. You can spell it out. I like the desert. The beach. I like the desert. The desert. He lives in the desert. What does he do for a living? Yeah. <laughs> 
30 seconds. to a game for Matt, Jonah, and Emily. This is a game that we call Emotions. Now, here's how this game is going to work. The three actors you see on the stage in front of you are all going to act out a scene. However, while they act out this scene, they will suddenly and inexplicably gain some new emotion that will completely dominate their personality. So, what I'm going to need from the audience, I'm going to need suggestions of emotions or attitudes. I'm going to start with things like happy, angry, rude, Marcus. condescending, afraid. Ideas for emotions. I need ideas for emotions. What do you got? Love sick. Love sick. Jealous. Keep them coming. Just mad. Just mad. Here's what we got. Matt, you are arriving at Emily's house to pick Emily up for a date. However, <laughs> Emily is still upstairs getting ready, and instead you meet Jonah, her very disapproving, stern father, at the door. Act like my dad. You exchange some conversation before Emily later joins the scene coming down the stairs. Ready? They're going to start out normal. You will see me hit the buzzer once, and I'll get their attention. I'll give them emotions as they go. Play. Excuse uh, me, sir. I'm here to pick up your daughter. <laughs> uh, I'm not in the mood to buy any vacuum cleaners right now, but uh, thanks for the offer. I'm not in the business of vacuum cleaners. I'm here to pick up your, your lovely daughter. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I am. I have it right here on my agenda. <laughs> on my agenda, see, agenda, so I'm here. Oh, and here's what I've got on my agenda. Have you not do that? <laughs> Jonah, 
You are sassy. <laughs> Wasn't he already? <laughs> so once again, I'm here to pick up your daughter. Uh, I don't think you understood me the first time. Okay, you aren't. And if you're a door-to-door -door salesman, which you are good at, or anything else, which you are also not good at, <laughs> you should just, you know, skedaddle. So we planned this out for months. I'm just here to pick up your daughter. No. <laughs> Can you please just step aside? Matt, you are hungry. Food. You were just. I want to get to your fridge and take your food. Walk <laughs> <laughs> into that kitchen Excuse and use your me. food. It's one of those days again. <laughs> Listen, you can have my fridge. Is that a ring pop? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> depressed. some kind of character quirk about them, Amaja has no idea what they are. They're going to enter the party one at a time, he is going to interact with them, and by the end of the scene he is going to hopefully be able to guess what is wrong with each of these people. 
So, here's what I'm going to need. Might I just say, once he gets his own, we get kicked out. That too. Here's what I'm going to need. Maja, deafen yourself. I think I'm in really loud. <laughs> Too much there, buddy. Yes, going. Yeah. Why don't you do that? <laughs> are we ready? Whenever you are. Okay. Play. I put on my good outfit for this one. <laughs> yes, got your good old people coming on now. Let's see, I might gotta play that down the carton record later on. <laughs> <laughs> They're not ready for that one yet. Now them kind of all here. Let's see. I'm make sure my hair is still tight. As long as I got all. The, they don't need no flash. This one. Um, <laughs> let me just hide this because they look like they, I don't know, they might steal and I ain't got nothing to do. You keep that to yourself. Matter of fact, I'll just keep it. That's all right. Right now. Hey, excuse me, honey, what are you doing? 
Sorry, I'm inspecting this place. It's my job. Okay, well, while you guys doing this, I'm putting on a record. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> you might not like some of these people, hey, you know? I'm right now. When you leave, I better not get you work in here. <laughs> all right, all right. Or I'm going to roast you. <laughs> not just infesting house. You know what? Do you think I look extra slimy today? <laughs> gentlemen, the Talbot players. personally thank all of you guys for coming out. You've made this first show ever absolutely spectacular. Um, I know all of us are going to remember this one forever, so thank you so much. Um, we are shooting to have one more show before the semester is over. We will have our show date announced as soon as we figure out exactly when and where that's going to be. But other than that, I want to thank you guys for joining us. You guys made this just as awesome as we did. So, hope to see you at the next one. Give it a